Our next story is in the history of the Don Bosco Technical School. Sinefa Katsimani brings us his story. Thirty years have passed. This school has shown through the years, involving its students with passion for youth transformation and having a legacy in the nation, especially in the education of technology. It has vowed to promote God's goodness and has its students respond to a voice louder than their own. It's, it's a Catholic institution also. We also live by our Catholic values and mission. But it's really there. We have religious activities that is from our we pray every day, we have masses uh, that makes the atmosphere very religious or in a Christian approach to really. So many of the youngsters, boys who come in, they feel that atmosphere that is a Christian school, a Catholic school. Don Bosco Technical School at Gabutu opened its doors on February 11, 1985 to the first batch of 120 grade 7 boys. And in August in the same year, the Department of Education approved the school as a high school. Martin Dai is one of the pioneers when it all started. Actually, Don Bosco came in 1981, they established themselves in in Aramiri, that's in the Gulf, that's Don Bosco, Aramiri. And when the bishop actually asked the citizens to come to the Nesan Capital District. So that is why we started, it opened its first doors in 1985 with 120 boys. So it's actually we, uh, they started, so it started with a grade 7, 8, 9, 10. Since its inception, this Salation school has achieved many of its visions and missions, committing to the education of the less privileged boys, teaching them spiritual and moral values, fostering their social involvement, the youths working for integral human development, and most of all, enabling them to live successful lives. Since the year 2000, coming, we the Don Bosco broaden meaning we started to offer in the secondary academic curriculum that will help the young people also enter into tertiary institution but in the work of industry we <laughs> almost all the technical uh, industry you will find uh, Bosconians working there as far as overseas with more achievements the school branched out into having its own technical institute. To get technical instructors to, to come and teach was quite expensive because I think the Catholic Church would uh, get contract officers from overseas countries to come. In. And Bishop Koronko at that time saw that why can't we train Papua New Guineans who will also train other water, Papua New Guineans. So around the year of 97, 98, he was communicating with the Salishan community. And a piece of land at uh, East Morocco was given to the, the Salishan. To start uh, a college that will train young Pap Papua New Guineans who will go to different high school or secondary school or technical or vocational center. Today, the school upholds all its morals and values and never ceasing to learn more and strive hard. It is now looking at greater things in the near future. We're always working around the clock to meet the signs of the times, things changes. That's why we don't, uh, the school doesn't stay stagnant. Almost every year we adjust and we upgrade and all that. I believe that 50 years from now, all this place will change. Uh, on the other hand, not only technology, Will change or will change, but also Don Bosco also tries to adopt to uh, in terms of human formation. Don Bosco Technical School Gabutu, serving God and the country, offering technology with a soul, forming its students' skills and spirit, 
and translating its visions into actions and missions into structures. This school is truly born for greater things. And as they are proud to call themselves, once a Bosconian, always a Bosconian. That's true. Thanks, Cinema, for that story. Well, that's all we have for you today. But before we go, thanks to Jules Collins for the lovely jewelry. Thanks for your company on the show today. And remember, for information on today's stories, you can email the Extra team or visit the webpage pngextra.com. Thanks for your company, and we'll see you again tomorrow.